If you're watching this and if you're here, that means you care about the market and also care about your investment, which has not been faring well in the last few months. The never-ending bull market took a long breather and in this shift, some of us got burned really bad. And when I say really bad, I didn't lose all of it or I didn't lose majority of it. In my long-term portfolio, I lost about 20 to 25 percent. And in my short-term portfolio, I lost about 40 to 45 percent. It's painful to watch all the stocks that once were high-flying and we didn't sell because we thought it's never going to end and we will continue this trend to see them down so much. And I'm sure some of you can so very well relate. So the stock and the market, which we never thought would even cool down a bit, eventually settled and now all of us are waiting for the bulls to return back in the market. In this video, I'll share my research and few pieces of information which is going to really help us decide if the green is the green we have been waiting for. Now to sum this video, I'm going to say this. If you want to buy options or if you're thinking about quitting your job to become a trader, then watch this video till the end because what I'm seeing in the market, it's telling me that the red days are here to stay a bit longer and also the type of buyers have shifted in the market. Take a look here. So let me share my screen and I will show you a chart over here. Yes, okay. On top what you see is volume right here and on at the bottom is shares, okay? So pay attention to this. Now, the number or the volume is going up, which you can see the trend right here. So the volume is going up and this started back in 2020, as you can see. But look what happened in 2021. We peaked at around January of 2021. And since then, the number of shares traded has reduced while the volume has gone up. If you pay attention over here, the graph is going up drastically over here, while the graph over here has not made the all time high that it did in the beginning of 2021. So what it means is that now the people are buying less number of shares, but more volume of those shares. That means they're only investing in handful of companies. It's not like 2021 January when everything was going to the moon and everybody was investing in all sorts of companies. They have consolidated, traders have consolidated. They are only now investing in value companies that see a huge future that has of course real earnings, real profits and real market demand. And also if you pay attention right here, so this is a very cool chart and numbers matter here. So that's why I wanted to kind of make it real clean and clear to see what's happened. So the blue line Line is the retail and the orange line is institutional buy side. Just pay attention to these two. Forget about bank and forget about non-bank for a second. So see what happened here. The orange line which is institutional buy side, it started to reduce all the way from fourth quarter of 2021 or 2019 sorry and then it continued the trend and it was really down around I would say the first and the second quarter of 2021 that was the time when retail was really hot and everybody was investing or putting money in all sorts of companies but then see what happened after that the retail peaked right here as you can see in first quarter of 2021 and after that the retail started to come down but look what happened the institutional investors started to creep up so they are up to 30 3.8% while we are or retail investors are down 18.5% traded. This is really good metric. This shows who is controlling the markets right now. It's the institutional investors. Of course, they are the one controlling the market right now, not the retails anymore. Because see, we really drastically dropped all the way 24% that we hit all time high in the fourth quarter or in the first quarter of 2021. And by the fourth quarter of 2021, you can see we are merely at about 18.5%. So now the shift or because of this shift, the higher price securities are getting less favored. And I'm talking about the earnings and all those things, not the share price, because historically retail investors have flocked more towards the lower price securities and also like trading the small cap companies because they're more volatile and it's kind of better bang for the buck in the short term. So retail traders are still buying, don't get me wrong. They set a net 41 billion into the stock market last month, according to the estimates from Morgan Stanley. But Morgan Stanley data also showed that money managers whose investment decisions are based on macroeconomics and market trends sold 43 billion of equity positions in January. That's enough to offset the 41 billion that we had in retail inflows. So now the selling does include some retail investors, but it's not enough as the institutional flows is what's driving the market. We can clearly see from the screen that I just shared that retail is up or the institution is up almost 33.8% while the retail is down all the way to 18.5% hitting almost 24% in 2021. So check this out. On Friday, these systematic macro funds had to sell 4 billion of S&P 500 futures in the final 45 minutes of trading. But not only this, the group is estimated to offload between 10 billion to 20 billion of equities this week as per Morgan Stanley. 
So you know what that means, much higher volatility in this coming week or I would say the week we are in right now. That's why someone messages me on Discord or when someone messages me on Discord asking about options, hey, is it a good play? Do you think it's a good idea? Agree that these are some amazing time and values for some companies, but coming weeks and months are going to be highly volatile. So that's why I'm staying out, my opinion only and not a financial advice. Now, I'm sure you'll be surprised to hear this stat. So last month, overall retail activity was at its highest in the past 13 months. Past 13 months, and I'm not talking about the percentage of 18.5%, that was the lowest. But the trading activity that happened in the past month has been the highest in the past 13 months. That includes the insane rally we had in January of 2021, of course. But not because of the gains or buys, retails were offloading and selling at all time lows. Another report from JP Morgan says that S&P 500 and Nasdaq 100 dropped to fresh lows to start the year, but why? Because the computer-driven funds were prompted to sell equities and went short against the market. Meanwhile, a spike in price swing forced volatility target funds to kind of reduce the leverage. And as I said, the same thing in my previous video that I did like I think two videos ago, previous one was SoFi, then before that in the video I mentioned this, that we are or any bounce that we get, the algos come in full force to get as much as out of the market because they don't believe in these bounces because they see the data internally and they know the bounce is not strong enough to sustain. And because of higher volatility, a lot of the institutional investors are forced to sell to rebalance their portfolios. Most of them are rule based, so they don't have to trade. I mean, it's not a choice. They have to. But that's not the case with the retailers. And no, no one is twisting your arm to kind of buy or sell. We just do it ourselves. But these, some of these institutional investors, they have to because they cannot go below a certain level. So they come out and sell on a really red day as well. So now let me share a chart that shows some bounce. Just gonna refresh it here. Some bounce that happened in the last few days in S&P. So take a look here, let me actually share this. So this is the month end bounce, as you can see the chart reads for S&P 500 over here. And I have actually made this chart enlarged right here. So you can see January 31st, so around I would say January 28th, we saw this bounce or the money coming back into the S&P 500. And then it went up all the way to about February 2nd. We had the great green Monday that we had. And then after that it went down and now it's picking back up. So we are not at the level where we were in January 28th. As you can see, we were really down. We are still higher up because there is more money that has come or I would say more funds that has come into the S&P 500 and these are not retailers, these are institutionals. So now I would like to introduce you to gamma hedging. This is a very interesting thing. When I was reading it, it kind of alerted me that, you know what, this is what's going on right now in the market. And it's going to come very handy as we go through these market conditions in the coming months. So what is gamma hedging? Let's take a quick look at the web definition and then I will give you a simple summary. So right here is gamma hedging, right? You can see on your screen. Okay, so gamma hedging is a trading strategy that tries to maintain a constant delta in options position, which is really, really important for option makers and also option traders to be able to maintain a constant delta in the options. Often that is delta neutral as the underlying asset changes price. Okay, so this is web definition. You can actually Google gamma hedging and you can read all about it with the example as well. But let me just explain in simple words what is gamma hedging. So let's assume you are holding a large number of calls. Then you might want to add some put option. This is why we see sometimes huge put options being purchased and our naked eyes cannot tell if the put option are being purchased to hedge against the calls or someone is actually bearish. So next time when you see options data, then consider this. What you see is sometimes not the whole truth. There could be many reasons for the trade because somebody could be really, really bullish about a, a security or an equity, but they would still buy a large number of puts because they have so much, so many call options open, they want to hedge their position against. So this is all well and good, but when can we see the market shift or change? Well, from the reports that I have seen, it looks like V retailers have to suffer a bit longer before we can actually see stability in the market. The demand is there, but retail anxiety is at all time high. If you are into two stocks, then you are thinking the stock is bad. If you are in 20 stocks, then you are thinking the index is bad, for example, NASDAQ or S&P. And if you are in multiple indices, then you know that the entire market is bad. So retail anxiety is touching all time high and the pressure is not going to leave us until these institutions decides to press the buy button again. 
I'll provide you with regular market updates and also show you what's been trending and what's being said in the market. If content like this is something that you are interested in, then consider subscribing and hit the like button so we can reach out to more investors. And for more one-on-one -on -one conversation, consider joining our Discord and Patreon. Links are in the description below. And also tell me in the comments below, how are you planning to hedge against these market conditions? Because I know some of you have some great strategies for hedging, for basically securing and saving our portfolios. So do mention in the comments. I read each and every comment. Thank you so much for all the support that you have given to the channel. It's always a pleasure to share all of this with you. Until next time, you all have a sparkling day.